Hello again, I'm East Mark Drake and thank you for joining me. So today, what we're going to discuss are the differences between whiskies. Okay, independently bottled whiskies, distillery bottling whiskies. What is the difference between something that is cask matured and cask finished and the difference in casks, okay? And also we're going to go through the difference between craft whiskey and small batch whiskey. There is no right and wrong. If you like it, you like it. In fact, if you like the entry level whiskey, then you're lucky, okay? Because that's cheaper and you'll probably be happier for it. But what I want to tell you about today, the first thing is the difference between independently bottled and distillery bottling. So we have, for example, an Ardbeg Corabrecan. This is bottled by Ardbeg themselves. They make millions and millions of this a year and it is bottled at a distillery by the distillery to sell as a mass-produced product. Not to say that it's a bad thing, uh, but it's very different to an independently bottled whiskey. Now what we have here is an example of an independently bottled whiskey. So Signatory Vintage is just one of many independent bottles. So we have the Ultimate Whiskey, we have Adelphi, we have the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, we have Rare Malts, and yes, that is literally a very rare malt. We have Caden Head, and we have lots of different types of independently bottled whiskey, lots of different brands. Now, this is just an example of one of them. They have bottled Mortlock, which is a separate distillery. So what they do is they acquire a barrel or barrels, and it's a very complicated process of how they do it, okay? So it's actually a little bit secret in some regard, but basically whiskey barrels is a form of currency. They trade that within the distilleries and independent bottlers. So you will get yourself a particular whiskey that is very unique by itself. In this situation, there is literally only 590 bottles from this run. This run is cask number 6079. In a lot of cases, independently bottled whiskies is a single cask. In some cases, it's multiple casks blended into a particular single malt. And you're probably asking, what is the difference between blended whiskey and a single malt? It's quite, it's quite simple. Single malt means that all of the malt and whiskey has to come from one distillery. So you can have something like this, where they probably blend hundreds and hundreds of barrels to produce millions of bottles, and they blend them, each barrel, they blend them to a proportion that will taste the same for every bottle. Okay, so you could probably have 300,000 of these bottles, every single one will taste identical. Now, you take something like the Adelphi. This particular run only has 282 bottles. 282 bottles of this run. When it's gone, it's gone, you will never have it again. So, each barrel in a distillery tastes different to the other. They've got similarities because they're the same style, the same environment, the same distilling process, same malting process, but they'll all taste different to each other. Some barrels are better than others. Some barrels are really delicious. Some barrels might be a little bit crap. But when they blend them together to create a flat profile, that's when you get a distillery bottling, and then it becomes consistent across the board. Doesn't mean it's bad, okay? So I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but when you get yourself a, um, an independently bottled whiskey, you're getting yourself a very unique one-off experience. One-off experience. And this is why I favor independently bottled. Funny enough is the cost is actually not more. In some cases, in a lot of cases, it's less. But that's not the point. The point is, what do you like? Do you want consistency, predictability every single time? Or do you want to drink a whiskey and go, wow, these two whiskies are from the same distillery, similar age, but they taste completely different to each other. That's what, that's what Independently Bottled will give you. In this case, this is also 67%. 67%. So you go and think about that. 67% versus this Highland Park here at 45%. Now, the reason why it's 67% is because it's also cask strength. Cast strength means when they open the barrel, they put it into the vat and they put it to the bottles and that's it. There's no change. 
There's no change in water, there's no added anything, it's just out of the barrel into the, into the bottle. So, once again, with cast strength, it gives you extra value, it gives you extra complexity, it gives you the ability to add water and change your experience. So once again, it's not about right and wrong, adding water to a whiskey will change your experience from the get-go. If you want to know more about the differences between blended and single malt whiskies, single barrel whiskies, independent bottle distillery bottlings, please ask me in comment below and I will try to explain it more for you in, in further detail. Now, I mentioned before we're going to go through craft whiskey and small batch whiskey. Now you've got something like the Ardbeg which is a massive, massive distillery. By no means Ardbeg will ever be considered small batch or craft. Then you'll have, and one of my favourites, the Springbank Campbelltown region, Springbank Distillery. They are considered to be a small batch or a smaller batch whiskey. Each run is roughly between nine to 11,000 bottles. Sounds like a lot, but when you split that over to the whole world, it's actually not that much. Then you have craft whiskies. Craft whiskies really is below that. Like we're talking 1,000 um, per run. We're talking even several hundred per run um, for every time of the still, because the distilleries are very small. Their bottling plants are very small. The barrel warehouses are very small, so they make even smaller. Once again, it's not a matter of, is a craft whiskey better because it's craft? Well. Maybe in some cases, yes, but to be honest, maybe not. Maybe because they're a craft, they've, they can't afford to do a particular stage in the, you know, in the, in the aging process or the barrel choices. You know, a lot of people think because it's craft, it's, it's always better. Well, that's not true because these big companies, they actually pick one of the best barrels out there. So barrel, is, barrel choice is one of the biggest things in whiskey. So if you have a crap barrel to begin with, you probably have a crap whiskey at the end. And they can't take that risk. So, so established companies, they spend a lot of money sourcing their barrels. Okay? So that's one of the most... So now we've talk, talked about barrels. I'm going to expand on that. Barrels slash casks, the same thing. So cask matured and cask finished. Most Scotch whiskies are actually initially aged in ex-bourbon barrels. Most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. So ex bourbon barrels go to Scotland, they rinse them, they weather them, and then they fill them, okay? Some, sometimes they do certain things to them, recharge them, whatever. But what they do is sometimes for the last year, two years, or three years, or five years of its life, depending on how old the whiskey is, they will actually finish it on a particular cast. For example, um, some most whiskies will be finished, not most whiskies, but a large portion of whiskies will be finished in a sherry cask. Now, there's a lot of sherry out there, or you can get Oloroso sherry, and then you get Pedro Jimenez sherry. So the more premium the sherry, they will advertise that in the front label of the whiskey because they're harder to get, taste different, usually taste better, more intense in flavor, more intense in color. Or you have cast matured. So you have some whiskies where from the beginning of its life, as a distilled spirit, it goes into a barrel, and that's it. It stays in that barrel for the rest of its life until it's bottled. That's called cask matured. So if you have a red wine cask and then you put a spirit in the red wine cask, 15 years later you bottle it, that is a red wine cask matured whiskey. If you have a whiskey that goes into a bourbon barrel for 10 years and then three years into a red wine cask, that is a red wine cask finished whiskey. If you have any more questions about cask finishes and cask maturation, please, once again, comment below and ask me as much as you want. So there is no right and wrong. It's all individual. Um, but look, let me know what you like. Have you ever had independently bottled whiskey before? Do you prefer independent bottled or do you prefer distillery bottlings? Do you like, what kind of um, cask finish do you like? Or do you just prefer them as vanilla as possible? Bourbon cask with sherry? Or do you like red wine cask? Or you know, peated, non-peated. Hey look, let me know your thoughts, ask any questions you like, and see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Comment below. Comment below.